five, four, three, two, one. Voila, Winston. Thank you for the kind introduction. Hippies, Paz and El Barrio and Bugs, salud. Two years ago this week, the Supreme Court decision in the Citizens United case handed the body politic of the United States over to the tender mercies of the corporates by granting them First Amendment protections and removing restrictions on corporate spending to influence U.S. elections. Brave Sir Barry has dithered ever since. If he were truly desirous of combating this political malignancy, there's at least two things he could have done already at any time in the last two years without any authorization or approval from anybody and which could already have vitiated somewhat the poisonous toxicity of the Citizens United opinion. He could have, one, promulgated an order requiring all and any corporations doing business with the U.S. government to disclose their political spending beginning tomorrow or lose their contracts, and two, he could have been using the presidential bully pulpit and declared his strong support for such amendments to get the big money out of politics permanently or to, and or, to eliminate corporate personhood. We know all along that the skeevy, jug-eared, grinning huckster isn't going to do any of that thing, so the next thing we have to do is figure out how to get uh, an amendment through without St. Barry's imprimatur. The difficulties of enacting them notwithstanding, there is but one key, the whole grail for such an amendment and it has to be public financing. Which is the key virtue of the proposal Dennis Kucinich advanced last week? Of the several amendments in the Hopper, Kucinich's seems to be the most the simplest. It forbids private contributions of any kind in federal election. That cuts right to the chase. On another site somebody complained public financing means officially sanctioned candidates, doesn't it? Well, I don't think so. Done properly, candidates chosen this way wouldn't be officially, but would be in fact publicly vetted. Here's how I think it might work. It, think runoffs. At level one, anybody who wants to run for office starts with X number of dollars to spend. It's dispensed by the state. No other funding is allowed. They use that money to get noticed to win support for their ideas. Then there's a vote. The top ten advance. There's more money. There's another runoff. The top three advance. There's more more money, there's a final ballot, there's a winner. It's public and transparent at every step of the way. Now, how do we finance it? Well, we take the money that it costs one carrier battle group every four years, and we take that money every four years and dedicate it to the presidential election process. And every two years, we take the money that it costs maybe to run a, oh, an army division or a bomber wing, and that goes to congressional elections. I mean, seriously, hippies. Other than providing for the general welfare and defending the borders, what better purpose is there for our money than the election and selection of the representatives who will write our laws and regulate our lives? We can talk about what you're going to run for when I see you at the beach. Pause. Back at you, Winstone.